Welcome back to another TS Terra Plays Terra video. I want to put a little disclaimer now that the video I did was before the March 17th update. Shouldn't cause too much differences though. Alright, so in today's video, what I want to go over is all around build concepts to the Reaper. So this is going to be a slightly different guide than what some people might be used to. Because in this guide, I kind of want to go over good ideas for beginner reapers, what they should be looking forward to, you know, some stuff for maybe intermediate reapers, and kind of like how advanced reapers might play. None of this stuff is for speedruns, um, so if you're here for that, you know, get that out of your mind, I'm not a reaper main. But I want to go over just basic things to help people out in the community. I've been noticing a lot of chatter in Global about Reaper. You know, oh, what inner should I wear? You know, what should I be doing? You know, and it's kind of lead me to, I think people don't understand that much of the class. And I'm, help I'm hoping that I can kind of clear some of that stuff up about the Reaper. Because, in my opinion, this class, since stigmas were released, has gone multiple directions and honestly could be one of the most complicated classes to build for. Um, it, it's not that hard to play, in my opinion. I think that you could be a fairly good Reaper with just knowing some bare concepts to it. You know definitely not the best without spending months of playing it but you know if you understand everything about the class you can definitely dish out some high damage it's just knowing how to do that damage how to build for that damage and then also like things to look out for with the changes from stigmas and there's all sorts of stuff that goes into this class now that I think if you don't know what you're talking about about Reaper and you're reading people talk about it in global you're gonna get a mix of answers and we'll go over why that is throughout this guide so the very first thing for any Reaper is your glyph setup so let's go over those glyphs now as I stated I am NOT a Reaper me so I do not have all the glyph points from the life system some of these can be changed but I want to go over the like the real ones that you shouldn't have no matter what and then I'll kind of point out the ones that I have because it's my personal preference that I prefer and ideas that you could swap it with so the first most important thing as we go down the line is sundering strike you need it glyph for both it's, it's probably your hardest hitting attack outside your apex skills the next one is Grim Strike. You want it glyphed for all four. The next is Death Spiral. You want the first, third, and fourth. You do not need Lingering. The increased effect duration is useless for PvE. Next is Whipsaw. You want the last three. You do not need Numbing. Again, useless for PvE. You cannot change the boss's attack speed today. It. Smite, I do not have Glyph. You do not need to use this skill unless you need to stun a boss or stun a player. Pendulum Strike, I have it Glyph for both. Shadow Burst, I do not have Glyph. This is the first skill we come to where, depending how you play, you can look into Glyphing it with these three. Um, in my opinion, importance would be definitely the crit the speed casting and then decrease cooldown if you have enough at the end and there are things you could swap out from what i have to see here and that more advanced reapers that know how to fit shadow burst into their rotation with everything else might be doing again it really depends how you play this class the next is soul reversal the decreased cooldown is not horrible, I do not use it because I don't use Soul Reversal as much since Bahar has been taken out. 
if they bring it back, you could argue, but honestly, with the cooldown of stigmas as well, I just don't think it's needed. Retribution, I personally like it off cooldown. I actually use Retribution to get out of bosses' attacks more than other Reapers. This is something you could remove, especially if you're more advanced than me. You could maybe put these glyph points, like I said, in either Shadow Burst or Cable Step when we get to it. But I like using Retribution. I personally, it's something I prefer. Shadow Reaping is a must to have that increased effect duration. Um, if you're new to Reaper, what Shadow Reaping is, is it's basically your steroid. It reduces all your cooldowns. And it uh, allows you to attack super fast. Shrouded Escape. This is the skill that we're going to have to dive a lot into um, in this guide. Because this is the skill that has changed the Reaper with stigmas so much. And you personally... Even if you're not going for the stigma build, you want both these glyphs. Even before the stigma stuff, you wanted both of these. Because Shrouded Escape activates what's called your assassination perk. Which I'll go over and explain what it is because that's the build I'm going to kind of go over. I don't have it, but I can cover what it's about. Again, Cable Step, I don't have it glyphed. Importance. Power link to Shadow Burst. Speed of Shadow Burst, maybe. You probably don't need to give cooldown ever. If you are going to use the Cable Step into Shadow Burst combo for anything, again, it's not really needed. But, you know, maybe there's a few advanced Reapers out there that are like, oh my god, it does so much damage since it's been buffed. But, again, I don't really play with it too much. Um, to me, Cable Step is more of a utility getting over waves you know getting away from something that's about it and then finally we have our apex skills and then shadow step which is our iframe i do have it glyphed so that is our basics of just your glyphs um no these four right here no negotiation for PvE at least you should have all of those along with Pendulum Strike in my opinion. Everything else you could possibly make a pretty solid argument why you want to change it but those five are the core skills and honestly these five are the core skills that you're going to be using a lot alongside with Dark Binding into Recall Sives. So I want to go over what one of these glyphs are to make something clear up front about the class and that's the power link on both death spiral and whipsaw it's a power link to grimstrike it can stack up to six times giving you you know for each stack an additional 10 percent damage to grimstrike basically you do not want a grimstrike unless you have those six stacks the way they get them is by using two death spirals or whipsaw will get you up to six double shears also has it but double shears has been taken out of the rotation in my opinion since awakening has came out because you can just move around it and with all the cooldown options now as well from energetic mask and stigmas you do not ever really need to double shear anymore Again, this might be something that Advanced Reapers have figured something out about that I might be missing. But if you're a new Reaper, you could probably get away without using it. If you're brand new and you don't have enough cooldown and you need to use it, then it's not the worst thing in the world. It just does not do as much damage as the rest of the skills or it just takes more time animation-wise. So it's just not really the most useful compared to Death Spiral on Whipsaw. Oh. So, it's important that Grimstrike does do its most damage. You also want to build your crit, so your Grimstrike's crit. Sunder, you can build for it, but you're going to be building a lot higher crit, and 
that will kind of change stuff. Thunder is your highest. The, the only skill you should be building for for more crit if you really want more crit. But Grim Strike is the main skill that you want to focus around. It's your main source of damage. You use it most throughout the fight. And it's, yeah, it's just what you want to build for. So, passives, I want to go over what this assassination is. Because you've heard me talk about it a bit now in this video alone. And, as I said, when you go into Shrouded Escape, you have the chance to pop assassination. The way you pop it is by hitting a boss or a monster with any skill by your invisible. If you get hit first, you do not get assassination. You have to hit the boss and then you would activate assassination. Basically, it lasts for 6 seconds. All of your attacks will become back hits. They will also be guaranteed crits and they will have an additional 200% damage. So this is where kind of your rotation as a reaper changes depending on what your cooldown is. And your crit also will change depending on what your cooldown is. Because this skill, this passive, along with shrouded escape, is what changes the reaper's playstyle. If you want to build for this, or if you don't care to build for this. Now, my build is not for this 100%, because I do not have the stigmas. If you're a new reaper, and you're a new player, you will not have the stigmas. So, personally, I suggest building towards this, because... You're not going to get 200% damage from anywhere else. No matter what you do, it's just nothing. No build you can do is going to match that buff for 6 seconds. And the concept of the assassination build is basically having that up close to 100% of the time. So nothing you do can match that realistically. And from what I've talked about to a few Reapers... I think the lowest I've heard is getting Shrouded Escape's cooldown down to 8 to 12 seconds. Which means when they pop it, they activate it. It's already probably, if it's at 12 seconds, down to 10 seconds off cooldown. 6 seconds of assassination now brings you down to 4 seconds to where you can then pop your Shrouded Escape again. So, you know, the way you play this class depends on, you know, what you're going for here. And personally, this build, if you can get to it, is one of the highest DPSing builds in the game. And it's massive, but it's very difficult to get to, especially if you're a new player. So I want to go over, like, ways to get to it, kind of, and... In case Reaper's not your main class, but you still enjoy it and you want to still do decent damage, what are other things you can do while you're building to this build? Because this is what starts to confuse people. And, you know, we're going to go over all that sorts of stuff. One last thing I want to go over skills is Sunder Strike. I mentioned how Sunder has the highest crit needed. Personally, don't use Sunder unless you're in Assassination. Grimstrike will do more damage than your Sunders typically. Unless you're in Assassination, then your Sunder will smack really hard. So within that, if you're in Assassination and you still have time left, feel free to throw a Sunder whenever you want. The other thing to know about Sunder is it does have what's called Bloodlust. Which means as the boss gets weaker, it does even more damage. So, before Stigmas, I used to say I wouldn't Sunder until the boss was anywhere between 40 and 60. Roughly around 50%. You know, mid-50s is when I started seeing Sunder really hitting higher numbers. Again, that's a personal preference. But, if you have Assassination up, if you, you know, go ahead and Sunder. If... Again, Grimstrike has a power link to Sunder to make it even stronger. So, 
you always thunder after grim striking but that's more about rotation we'll get into that a bit later when i go into a dungeon and discuss kind of like beginning rotations and you know or enrage rotation and just general fighting rotation the next thing to go over is now that skills are done and i've explained quite a bit i want to go over our crit factor 220 is very low and this is my pre setup I do not have a bracelet anymore on this class and I have not reworked it since I had a bracelet which brought me close to the 250. 250 crit is a decent place to sit if you're not doing the assassination build. So if you're not doing crazy cooldown strats and you just want your reaper to smack hard without assassination, you want to get close to 250. That 250 crit only really works too for ruinous manor hard mode and below dungeons if you go into corrupted sky nest or you go into rampaging arcanine or even bahar when they bring it back out any dungeons that have a higher crit resist like those three and newer dungeons will most likely have a higher crit resist i haven't played the arenas too much to know but i think their crit resist is also higher you will need to consider building more than 250. 220 you can get away with. Again, it's personally too low. Mine's there because I don't have a bracelet anymore. But 250 is a decent, you know, place to sit at. Now, if you're advanced and you have the assassination build, do you remember earlier I said that you're guaranteed to crit you're guaranteed back crits so if you can get assassinate every six seconds and you could keep popping it then you don't have to build any crit at all because no matter what the crit you know resistance of the boss is you're gonna crit this is where the complication comes in this is where people in global when they ask what inner do i wear what jewelry set should i run where things get complicated because some reapers refuse to run the assassination build they don't want to get that many cooldown stigmas and they're saying you need more crit you don't have enough crit but other reapers are running the assassination build and they're running absolutely no crit so you have to decide what do you want to do with your reaper personally i want to run the assassination build it's very expensive to get it though so i'm going to offer a hybrid build which is you run as close to 250 crit and still run the cooldown set up so let's go over into the inventory and let's look at what i mean by that if you're a new reaper and you want a main reaper I, I will say it one last time you should really want to run the assassination build it's going to be the most damage possible it's going to take a lot of work to get there but it will be high dps output within that build yourself a pump set of jewelry you don't have to run it all you can change it as you see i have a priest and mystic set up and you know but definitely build up your pump accessories as you can see i have one carving ring i've had that since before or about once apex or awakening skills came out so i just kind of built it up because i already had it and then i also kept my carving necklace from that time because if you don't run the assassination build Typically, you swap carving when you're with a priest, and you go pump necklace when you're with a mystic. Um, as you can see, I have the power roll on both my necklaces. My earrings have endurance and HP, and my rings are all crit power and power. You can see my etchings change. This is the point of what I was doing with my hybrid build. On anything that was meant for the final assassination build that's not being used right now like my pumped ear 
or my pumped ring and my pumped necklace, I'm running pumped etchings. On the rest of the stuff, I'm running keens. The idea that I was going with was once I got enough cooldown and got assassination down, I would swap my keen etchings out. Now you can reverse this. You could run keen crystals. Crystals would be a lot easier to swap out than etchings. But I just chose etchings because I had so much sand and stuff from Harrowholt that said I don't really care. But ideally I would want to swap those out once I get the cooldown. The brooch, I am also running a keen etching and I'm running power 3, crit factor 6. Again, if you got the assassination build, you could technically run power 2. Yes, in the brawler video I talked about, running power 2 was bad. But in this scenario, since <laughs> everything guaranteed the crit and assassination, go ahead and run power 2 at that point. You know, get as much power as you can because you're guaranteed to crit. Do you know though, if they, you know, if they nerf the build or make assassination or they change it, you might have to switch back. But I don't see them changing it anytime soon. Um, also, you want to run the improved transcendence because you're most likely going to be using Krum strikes way more than your other awakening skills. Energetic Mask, again, power rolls on it if you can get it, and that's basically it for the jewelry. Um, like I said, depending on what you're doing for the assassination build, change your crit as needed. If you're not running an assassination build, you want to run close to 250 crit. And as you can see for the inner, I have a crit inner to help bring me up. If I had the assassination build, I'd be running a power in there. So, this is kind of where things start to change. Especially when you need to make a really heavy decision. And even though you could change it, it doesn't take much to reroll the top roll of your chest plate. If you're going for the assassination build, you want decreased cooldown to shrouded escape. If you're not going for that, do increase damage to Grim Strike. Those are your two options. And then the rest of it is just decrease damage, decrease damage, decrease damage, and raise HP. Very standard rolls. I would almost say for any class that that's the bottom rolls you want. Tanks change slightly. Gloves, power, attack speed, crit factor. Boots, again, very standard movement speed. MP, Endurance. You could swap MP out for... Oh my gosh. Apologize about the game freaking out on me. What is the other one people like to swap MP for? Uh, decreased duration of slumming effects. I don't really like that. Again, that's a personal thing. But some people prefer that. It's not really wrong. I just like having more MP, especially on a class that really burns mana. Um, again, the belt, of course. <laughs> the belt as well, I have a keen etching and I run power 3 crit 6. If I was running full assassination build, I just all 3 would be power. So this is kind of my hybrid setup throughout all of that stuff. And I'll go over the weapon as well, but just note that if I was truly running assassination build, I'd have three or four soul stigmas with as close to perfect roll cooldowns on them. And that's why it's so expensive, because as you start playing the game, if you've been playing the game, you know how hard it is to get, you know, yellow stigmas as it is. And then not only do you need to get soul stigmas because you need the cooldown the souls have the most amount of different roles so if you need to go back and relook at my stigma guide you'll see all the different roles you'll start to understand why i say this build is very complicated to get and i know a few people who have gotten very close to it 
or who have it basically and I can say it's the way to go but it just doesn't happen overnight so personally if you go into a dungeon without the assassination build and you're running full power you're not gonna do damage you're gonna do damage every 30 40 seconds whenever your shrouded escape comes off cooldown and that's kind of kind of bad so that's where you want to consider then how can I personally pivot to my assassination build especially if you want to be an advanced reaper you want to pivot that way you don't have to you could just stay with the more classic build 250 to 280 crit and just do a normal reaper rotation um you know not pop shrouded escape off cooldown and use the hardest hitting skills and just keep a flow again there's nothing truly wrong about that it's just that there is something better as you can see the weapon pretty standard i have double cooldown i have increased damage when attacking enraged increased crit power by three and increased damage by 6.9 the weapon you could change a bit you could run double enrage if fights are short enough that that double cooldown really helps my shroud escape come down a lot which is what i am going for now if i got perfect world stigmas and found out that you know i could remove one or both of those i would but again this is where you have to base your build off of your stigmas and my stigmas just to go over them i don't have that great role of stigmas i have 1.4 cooldown and i have 1.2 cooldown that's it i have blues i don't have anything crazy on my reaper yet i plan to build it but i've been putting everything into my main class and i kind of took a break from grinding these annoying things and getting these up to yellows because it's a lot so that's where you gotta consider if you're a reaper main go ahead full flesh dive into it if you're happy where your main is and you want to do this for reaper go ahead dive into it get those up do whatever roles you want that's going to do the most damage but if reaper is just like a fun class you like to play definitely consider like some of the stuff that i mentioned in the beginning running higher crit because you need it you know my shrouded escape is only 22 seconds long with everything that you saw that i had cooldown wise it's still 22 seconds which means about now even earlier than that point all that damage i do if i had full power and full damage and everything i'm not gonna be hitting that hard it's just not gonna crit and grim strikes that don't crit don't do damage so please as a reaper take into account what you need to know and to go over those highlights that I will real quick is make sure your Grim Strikes are critting. If they're critting with 220 crit, 220 crit, then you're good. I don't think it will. I think you're fooling yourself, especially if you're in Ruinous Manor. But if it does, okay, fair enough. If you need to run 250 crit or 270 crit for your Grim Strikes to crit outside of Assassination, then run it. it. It's better to crit your Grim Strikes than to not crit your Grim Strikes. Trust me. So now that I've gone over all the basics, and I do apologize for the long rant, there's a lot of information to cover about this class that I wanted to go over. Again, I've seen a lot of people talking in global. What do I run? What do I do? And I see some people saying run full crit. And I see some people saying run full power. Well, that's why you're getting a mix of answers. Because old traditional Reapers that have been running full crit 
since before awakening skills you know who might not realize about the shrouded escape assassination buff with the cooldown from stigmas how powerful it can be they're going to tell you to run full crit or a lot of crit other new reapers might be keeping it a bit more secret and they're running full power because they have their assassination build again a hybrid build's not going to give you as much damage as the full assassination build but you just can't magically get that build it's don't think as a new reaper that you're just magically going to get perfect yellow stigmas because you're not which is why I suggest building the hybrid if you want to go that route if you don't care about the assassination build then do whatever you want go full crit or go 280 crit 300 crit whatever you need to get your crim strikes and your sondo to crit pop assassination every 45 seconds or whatever it is without the cooldown rolls and do your damage but if you're trying to build the assassination build use all the tips that I've given you and personally because you still have to do dungeons to get the gear or to get upgrades while you're working on your assassination build you don't want to do bad damage because then less people are going to want to run with you so at this point I'm going to kind of try and find a dungeon to go over some rotation stuff I'll probably be putting a cut in the video so, yeah. Okay, so as you can see, I was able to end up with a full squad. Huge shout out to this group. I am pretty sure I know all of these people for the most part. Um, Faith is a good friend of mine and so is Limits. So, really cool that they were willing to come and run. And I did kind of warn them that I'm going over rotations and recording this run. So, really, really awesome that they're willing to help out to fill the LFG. We are going into RMH and hard mode. And I'm going to kind of just go over basic rotations, what to do when you're starting the fight, what I do, and just kind of go over the class as we play a little. Also, I have, uh, as you can see, changed my crit factor by switching my crystals to get as close to 250 as I can. I'm going to pop all my buffs. I could pop a lamb or something to get me the rest of the way, but yeah, that's just too much. So, I'm going to shoot it. Oh, no, it's going to get pulled away. So, I pop my brooch, pop death spiral into the cage. Then I pop my steroid, my death spiral, and at this point you want to do your Grim Strike Spam. You can get a Sunder in real quick. Don't get stunned like that, that's bad. Very bad, I lost and lose my rotation. But basically when you pop your cage, you want to get as much damage and hits off on it. When you're in Sassanate, you want to make sure you get the most Grim Strikes as you can out. And for basic rotation, what you see is I'll do a Death Spiral, Death Spiral into two Grim Strikes, Pendulum, Whip Soul into two more Grim Strikes, into our Scythes. And you kind of want to re rinse and repeat that. And if I have Assassinate up, I'll always pop a quick Sunder if I can. And that's the basic rotation to Reaper. That's it. And you just kind of rotate throughout all of that. If you have the Assassination build, you want to focus more on your Scythes. Your Dark Binding. And you want to focus on your Grim Strikes as well. I'm dead. Oh, I lost that crystal. Lovely. Perfect for a guide video. How to be bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the basics to the Reaper rotation. I could have done this on the Crab. I just did not want to because, you know, every time you pop your Assassin, you have the chance of resetting the Crab and not being able to show off the damage. Um, that's about it. Yeah, there's, there's nothing left. We all got stunned. 
I'm so proud of all of us. So, that's the basic stuff to a Reaper rotation. You could change it up a bit. Personally, if you're running the Assassination build, your cooldowns are so low that you probably don't ever need to, you know, you don't ever really need to even Pendulum and Whipsaw, potentially. But, so yeah. I'm gonna stop the guide here, finish up this dungeon, and, uh, that's about it. See y'all around in Aboria Gamers. Hope you enjoyed.